Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates. And this evening we'll be having a look at the latest GFS, GM, ECMWF and GFS ensembles along with uh, the UK Met Office uh, warnings area as we do have some yellow warnings for rain in force over this weekend into early next week. We're currently having a look at the GFS uh, run and uh, as you can see with the upper air temperatures we do actually have quite a cold air mass incoming for the uh, western parts of the UK and through today that cold air mass is going to travel more across the country. Now it's a polar maritime air mass so it's not brutally cold um, but it is cold enough over hills uh, to produce snow uh, and lower levels hail, growl, sort of showers. Now as we move through that air mass does move through quite quickly and by Saturday afternoon we're most of the country is engulfed in it before another air of low pressure is spinning up in the Atlantic. So yeah for the next day or two we're going to have a lot of sunshine and showers feeling pleasant in the sunshine. As soon as you see a shower, a snow shower or rain or hail shower the temperatures will drop quite a lot with highs around 9-10 degrees being a little bit warm in the sunshine and feeling quite considerably colder whenever you have those showers. It must be quite a blustery wind around, but yeah, westerly wind, and we continue with that. But over the course of this weekend, we see a build of pressure towards uh, Europe and up in towards Russia. And what this does is it sort of tracks the jet stream southwards and picks up uh, warmer air from the south. So if you look at the uh, southern parts of the UK, getting up to about maybe seven and a half, eight, nine, ten degrees at 850 HPA, which could allow potential for 20 degrees next Monday, Tuesday. Now, I've seen some pictures going around of Met Office um, apps showing 26, 27 degrees um, for places like Heathrow, Kew Gardens in London. Now, I've heard that those have actually been altered um, by meteorologists there. They're human, um, humans have put that in basically to say... Um, uh, because generally those are the areas where we see the highest temperatures because of urbanisation and stuff like that. So they're sort of estimating at this stage, but I very much doubt we will see 27 degrees widely. Uh, I mean, there may be a spot or two that gets mid-20s. Most areas maybe see 20, 21 degrees, feeling a little bit warmer in that sunshine as well. But for those in the western areas and northwestern areas, it's going to be potentially quite wet and windy. Because if you have a look at this, we are pulling in southwesterly winds, quite cold air to our north. Combined with this um, warm air to our south, it's going to create a strong, uh, strong along weather front, um, which is going to be powering to northwestern Scotland, producing a lot of rain. And you can see just on the boundary between the low and the uh, the high. So could be a lot of rain in that area and we'll have a look at the Met Office warnings in a minute. But as we run through that higher pressure maintains over the top of the UK before it heads and retrogrades back, back out into the Atlantic and this is where the chances we see a quite a polar um, like feel with a uh, very strong northerly blast. You can see this air coming all the way from Svalbard and the North Pole. You see minus five in Goss, the whole of the UK. Now it's coming from a more northern um, origins the dew points are a bit lower and it's going to feel colder as well highs maybe only six seven eight degrees lower over hills overnight potentially get down to freezing or below and we could see even snow to lower levels um yeah, overnight especially in the day more likely to be growl pool um, or maybe some sleet but over hills you could see a good few centimeters here and it's going to be quite good over uh, over the hills in Scotland um, could see uh, a decent covering of snow with that but as we move through you see there's potential some even colder air does move in and some ensemble members and some runs recently have been showing some of this minus 10 line getting in not on this current GFS run um, but there's still the potential there's still time to change it's still about a week away but doesn't definitely looks look we're going to be staying in this very cold air mass for a considerable period of time and then towards the end of this gfs one we get another northerly blast so we have this high pressure remaining around greenland and we get this very cold northerly blast again and we maintain these northeasterly winds um and we stay under the minus five line for a good potentially five, six, even seven days before we do go more westerly again towards the end of the run. Now, I've heard a lot of people saying, oh, only if this were January. Now, if this were January, yes, we would be um, under uh, maybe a foot of snow quite widely. Um, this would be one of the most extreme winter, winter, wintry periods we would have ever had if this sort of pattern came off in January. Um, but this pattern, these patterns don't really come off. Uh, in the winter. Um, for example, December 2010, where we saw widespread snow, we did see this sort of pattern. But the reason why we don't see this is because we can't get that strength of high pressure over towards Greenland, um, simply because the polar vortex is it's just too strong. Um, only really rare occasions can we get that with 
sudden suspect warmings uh, or stuff like that. But in April, springtime, the polar vortex is in a strong warmer air to the south, allow higher pressure to build more. So when we do see that injection of southerly winds into Greenland, it allows the higher pressure to build for longer. So although the synoptics in January would give very, very cold conditions, widely um, not getting above freezing um, and loads of snow around, it's not a synoptic pattern that's likely to come off. Um, similar, uh, how we see very deep areas of low pressure, very, uh, you see dark, uh, you see dark purples and blues coming over the top of the UK in January, February with big name storms, but you don't see that in July normally, you don't see those really deep areas of low pressure. It can happen, but you don't normally see it, it's just simply because uh, it's a different time of year. Um, but yeah, that's that's just a brief explainer why um, it's very you shouldn't look at if this were January and think, oh, uh, we wish we had this two or three months earlier because it's very unlikely to happen um, uh, and for it to happen. But, you know, for those snow lovers out there, you can only dream. But we'll now have a look at the GM run again. Very similar pattern to the GFS uh, with those southwesterly winds, a lot of rain towards northern Scotland. Uh, and then that high pressure builds to our north and we do get that southerly plunge. Now, it's more under higher pressure, so it's more likely to be frosty and cold, um, less showers, still some showers, it's quite a strong wind coming in. And if you look at the upper airs, pretty cold upper airs, minus 10 does get into Scotland, so very cold, and you see this very big area of high pressure over towards Iceland and Greenland, 1,050 uh, 1, millibars, so very strong. Um, I'm going to maintain that, we're even going to quite a cold easterly wind, and with sort of minus 8 line coming through, which would be very cold, daytime highs, wouldn't be surprised if it didn't get above maybe 5 or 6 degrees, overnight widespread, uh, quite cold and frosty, um, and this, especially for those lowland, low lying areas, will be pretty miserable, um, as it will be very cold, um, not quite cold enough for snow, um, probably a lot of showers coming in, um, uh, but over, uh, and making it feel really quite chilly. Over northern hills, again, quite a high chance you do see some snow from this, but remember any snow you do see, whenever you see a period of sunshine, it does rapidly melt it away at this time of year, so you really are going to need that elevation, those colder temperatures, if you want to see any settling snow, and probably night time is best if you uh, like that sort of uh, like snow. Beyond that, we maintain this higher pressure, and you can see this lobe of the remaining polar vortex is heading out of the North Pole. Um, and that does look like it's going to plunge its way southwards into Europe. Now, I can't rule out the air of high pressure collapsing before that happens, but on this current GFS run, it's coming very, very cold for the middle of April um, with this plunge. And if you ever look at the Northern Hemisphere, this is one of the last pieces of um, remaining cold air plunging towards Europe. So it'd be very interesting to see how this does develop. It could be very interesting and potentially very cold end of March and start of April. Now if we have a look at the ECMWF, you see very similar patterns to the other two models. And then we get the area of high pressure building to our north. And again, we do pull in those northerly winds, but the high pressure doesn't get quite as far north. It does collapse a little bit. So we are pulling in the very cold air. We do get generally quite cold air into the east, Cold enough again for wintry showers, potentially daytime highs being quite low. Um, as we move beyond that, the ECMWF goes to an even more extreme, uh, extreme, um, uh, extreme run, uh, like the GM, with a very cold polar northerly wind. Look at that wind coming directly from the North Pole. That is exceptional. There would be a brutal uh, cold front on that. It would be one of those where it goes from around 10, 12 degrees to 2, 3, 4 degrees in the space of half an hour or so with very heavy hail, rain, and even some snow with that. Brutally cold. If we did see that minus 10 line get through, we would be seeing pretty much snow quite widely. Um, so truly exceptional runs coming out. I wouldn't take these literally at the moment, again, because they can very much change. Um, and we are used to seeing some very extreme uh, runs at day 10 especially. Uh, so I, I wouldn't really take this too literally at the moment. It just shows you the potential for some very cold conditions. And if we do have a look at the Northern Hemisphere view, you can see it's tapping into the uh, really, really only remaining cold air over the Arctic is heading into Europe. Now, if we have a look at the GFS ensembles, you can see how that ECMWF and those GM runs are outliers. You can see generally most of the GFS ensembles are going between minus 5 and minus 10. 
But if we look at the short term, you see that polar maritime air mass getting down to minus six, minus seven degrees. Again, not quite cold enough for snow to low lying areas. It only lasts maybe 12 or 18 hours over hills. Still, decent chance of snow, and a lot of areas could see some hail. Then we see that uh, big temperature rise, dry as well. So we could see a good two or three days sort of warm spell, potentially for 20 degrees, before we plunge back into the freezer. Um, temperatures going down to minus five, maybe even minus 10 at 850 HPA. Again, a few outliers going even colder than that. Following those GM and ECMWF northerly plunges, and generally we remain around five to five, six, seven degrees below average for the foreseeable future. So quite a cold start of April coming up. Um, Looks like winter is returning, um, and it's going to feel pretty cold out there. So <laughs> don't put your hats and uh, your gloves away too quickly, as you see uh, whenever you see these warmer temperatures um, towards early next week. Because by the following weekend, it could be really quite cold again, and there's potential we could see some snow around. Finally, if we have a look at the yellow warnings, we have a yellow warning in force for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday for northwestern parts of Scotland, and it's because of those weather fronts. There's potential for 80 to 100 millimetres, or maybe 150 to 250 millimetres. It's very likely, as you see, on these weather charts, that's very likely to see that boundary where those weather fronts are going to set up. Not as high impact as, again, it's over areas that do see generally quite a lot of rain. If this was falling in the south or in the Midlands, it most likely would be an amber, if not a red warning. Um, but over the mountains, hills, a lot more rivers around, uh, large catchment areas, so it's less likely to cause too many impacts um, that, uh, that uh, warrant anything higher than an amber warning at this stage. It could upgrade, but at this stage, um, yellow warning is uh, really warranted for surface flooding, etc. Um, but yeah, this sort of rainfall really it, it would put London and many areas in the south underwater because I think I saw a stack from the Met Office. Uh, 600 millimetres, and uh, I, think, I think 625 millimetres is average rainfall in London for the whole year. The potential, about a, th a third of that, is going to fall over the course of a couple of days in northwestern Scotland. So it just shows you the amount of rain that is going to be falling um, over the next few days. So if you are in northwestern Scotland, do mind out for that. Um, as it could uh, produce some surface flooding, um, but I expect most of you are. Do, do sort of expect these sort of uh, rain events as they do come ac come along quite often, but do uh, stay uh, vigilant out there. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again uh, for another video soon.